<clears throat> Labs is a virtual instrument library by Spitfire Audio. And just in case it won't come across from the rest of this video, I want to start by saying I absolutely love Labs. It's free, almost all the libraries sound fantastic, with more added regularly, and instead of trying to compete with paid libraries and failing, Labs occupies its own special place in your arsenal, providing you with unique and rare instruments with tons of character and attitude that sound great right out of the box. With that out of the way, I'd like to take a minute or 12 to talk about the UI, as it's where Spitfire has really dropped the ball. In a world where so many plugins are dried up pieces of turd rolled in shiny UI glitter, Spitfire Audio has got to be the only company with the opposite of that problem, having created a true gem of a free plugin whose value is undermined thanks to its god awful interface. And today, we're gonna tear it a second butthole. That's right, this plugin UI actually has a butthole. Installing the Spitfire Labs library is an easy five step process. Go to labs.spitfireaudio.com, create an account, download the Spitfire Audio application and the plugin. The app will take care of downloading and storing the instrument libraries while the plugin plays them. Next, install the app and sign in again on the app because of course, and congratulations, you are now several repetitive steps away from actually using it. Uh, don't you just love that every piece of software you want to download these days makes you create an account, set a password, confirm your email, sacrifice your firstborn child. What a time to be alive. Once you got the app and the plugins installed, head to the labs tab and you will see a whole fuck ton of instruments that you can download from ambient pads and textural soundscapes to a very solid set of string libraries, a decent drum set, and even more rare instruments like the hammered dulcimer, the auto harp, and so on. All of which are lovely and again I hope it's very clear that I really love these sounds and that's why I even bothered to put up with all this crap I'm about to bring up. Now while there are much more fundamental issues with the UI, I'd be remiss to ignore the thumbnail design in these libraries, which are reminiscent of collages a grandma would make after a week of using PowerPoint. For a library that boasts incredibly usable and meticulously sampled instruments, Spitfire seems to have gone out of its way to make them look like cheap toys. Let's do a quick round of speed roasting. I mean, does this mean anything? Why is there a bingo card here? And what's with the Monopoly money here? Does this five of clubs mean anything? Hello, my name is Free? Why are some of these title boxes sideways and some the right way up? Did they think this is cool design or did they actually upload a sideways thumbnail and not notice? How come the UI design on the plugin is so minimalistic, but these thumbnails are so cluttered? I thought less is more is like the motto of this company, but no one brought that up to whoever they found on Fiverr to design these thumbnails? These are minor grievances of course, all of which I would gladly ignore if the process of installing this stuff was any kind of straightforward. There's no option to install all, and unlike, I don't know, any app in the world, you can't left drag to marquee select them, nor can you hold command to select a bunch of them at once. No, you'd have to click install on each of these one by one, and each time you do one, you are asked to reconfirm the installation directory, after which you are then taken to the downloading tab for no real reason other than to see that the download has begun, which they could also show us with a little number pop up. And if you enjoy this experience, we'll strap in because you will have to repeat it more than 20 times. Find the next library, click install, confirm the download path again, get navigated to this tab again, click back on the labs tab, which every time you do takes you to the top of the page and not where you were before, and then navigate back down to where you've been before and rinse and repeat. Maybe this wasn't as annoying when Labs included like 10 to 12 libraries just a few years ago, but to their credit, they have since added a lot of stuff. And this whole process has just gotten so annoying. I mean, sure, if you're a long-term diehard user, you probably have most of them installed and have to go through this once every couple of months. But if you're a new user, prepare an hour plus to set up all this stuff. And you better not move these libraries because even their own website seems confused as to how this can be done. I moved my libraries to a new hard drive once and after a couple of hours of aimlessly wandering their website, trying their fixes and having them not work, I just gave up and re-downloaded all the sounds. And boy, let me tell you, you'd have to take my word 
support for that part as I don't get paid nearly enough to go through that process again. So I don't know, I'm no programming expert, but is a download all button really that hard to add, especially for an app that gets updated for no apparent reason like six times a year? You would think that one of these updates would focus on actually improving the user experience. By the way, don't be fooled by this download all icon on their website. It does not download all. It just opens the app for you. Are they just trying to make me lose my shit? Am I being punked? And again, as much as it feels nitpicky to roast the thumbnail design, here's where it once again becomes more than just an eyesore and turns into a flaw. These thumbnails contain no visual indication of what these instruments are. Sure, most of us know what a piano is, but in case you didn't study ethnomusicology and haven't heard of an instrument like the charango, there's nothing in this thumbnail design that would hint at what a charango actually is. Is it some sort of a percussion? Mm. Is it a Central American street food staple? Mm. Is it a synth? Mm. A simple Google search will show you that it's none of the above. The charango is a guitar-like chordophone. Cool, but why tack on so many useless images instead of have it simply include a picture of said guitar-like instrument? Aesthetics? Trolling? A hidden deal with Google? The public needs answers, goddammit! Oh, and don't even get me started on some of the other gems here like Opia, because that's not even the name of an instrument. Googling it yields a dictionary entry, denoting a visual disorder. <laughs> I'll give it to them, they nailed visual disorder with that thumbnail. And I guess if I was a linguistics professor, I'd appreciate the humor, but I still don't know what the thing actually contains in terms of, you know, sounds. Ooh, and don't you just love the inclusion of barely legible text. Let's zoom in a bunch. Made by musicians in London for anyone anywhere? Huh? Geez, I'm so glad I zoomed in on this text to still learn next to nothing about this library. Musicians in London, you say? There's just a wealth of bad design here, but I'm sensing this is starting to sound petty, so let's close this app for now and get to the plugin. Installing an instrument library from scratch is never not time consuming. But if you thought you're over the worst bit of using labs, Think again. Looking at this UI, two words immediately come to mind. Wasted space. The Labs plugin is a masterclass in awful UI design and I want to kill it with fire. Can anyone explain to me why a plugin with three visible parameters need to take up an 1100 by 600 pixel rectangle of precious screen real estate? Here's a 300 by 400 rectangle on this side with nothing but a version number. Could this not have been placed over here? If that's not annoying enough, here's another 300 by 400 rectangle right here with not even that on it. I can't tell if I just opened the plugin or entered the matrix. But hey, maybe if I open this drop down, it'll fill the space. Nope. It just covers the one area of the UI with anything useful on it and crams all this information they're using. I mean, what is this? A font for ants? We'll get back to this monstrosity shortly, but let's close it for now so we can get back to this mess. Ah, uh, look, I get the joke. It's called Labs and it's a clean, minimal white UI. But people need space to look at other stuff. Faders, meters, that type of shit. It just looks like you were planning on adding more features but gave up and never bothered to actually resize your plugin. And while we're at it, if you're wasting this much space, could you not have made this keyboard down here a bit wider? How do you justify all this waste of space while each key is all of four pixels wide? Look, I'm no graphic designer, believe you me, I don't need to say that to anyone who has seen my thumbnails, but even I could have designed a more compact UI for this. Let's grab this stuff here and bring them to the center. Let's take these bits and put them on the line below. I'll nudge this drop down menu and these parameters down a bit. Move this version number over here. Or you know, who actually gives a shit. We'll move the Spitfire audio logo over here, even though it does nothing. In fact, let's even grab this Labs logo and put it here. Lord knows we got the fucking space. Tuck the sides in and there you go, I just saved you all this space without resizing anything whatsoever. It's still an eyesore, but at least it's not devouring screen real estate like I'm Hans Zimmer and got two 80 inch monitors in front of me. Some people use this on a laptop, you know? Let's take a closer look at the three parameters we do have. Pop quiz. What are they? I mean, look at these icons. If you can see them in these colors against the white background and take all the time you need and tell me if you can make sense of them. Cause Lord knows I've been using labs for three years and I'm still not sure. Do these symbols mean anything to anybody? Like what's this? Looks to me like some sort of a Venn diagram. Maybe if I hover over it, I'll get some text pop up. Nope. What about the fader? 
Still nothing, but we get a percentage point. So now I can know exactly how much of this mystery parameter I'm adjusting. Great. Is this the sun? Does that mean brightness? Is this a butthole? <laughs> Told you there's a butthole. These icons mean nothing. Just label your stuff. There's a reason language was invented. And I know what you're thinking. Are you? I'm sure there's a user manual somewhere that explains all of this. And yes, sure enough, the manual says this is expression and this is dynamics. Cool, but couldn't you take some of this void of whiteness and add some text here? You know, just in case I read your manual but forgot. Or again, here's something you could do. Make the Spitfire audio logo a clickable link to your user manual. There's an idea. Uh, and then there's this round thing with a symbol on it. The user manual tells me this is the effects knob. All right, but why is this a knob and not a fader? Because I'm guessing you just wanted to waste space, right? It definitely doesn't add to the experience. In fact, this knob is just extra annoying and doesn't work like any other knob in any other plugin because I can drag my mouse to move these faders, but this one I'll have to drag up to this point, then change the direction of my mouse drag to get to the end. It's not even like this knob has a higher resolution. It still just goes from zero to 100% in 1% increments. Was there something wrong with these faders that two thirds of the way you decided to change the design? And please comment below if you can explain how any of these symbols relate to dynamics or expression or effects. I just wanna know if I'm too dumb to have seen the connection, but then again, one could argue that if an icon needs to be explained to you in order to make sense, then it has failed its singular purpose. It looks like you can click on this so let's do that and ladies and gentlemen we finally have text though how come when I adjust this reverb I hear next to no reverb change on this otherwise beautiful sounding lap steel instrument Let's see, this one says reverb. And yeah, I guess I kind of get it. It's like sound bouncing around, but this one means variation. How does this symbol mean variation? Am I missing something here? Oh, and check this out. If I adjust the variation, it actually brings down the reverb. But then my question is, what does the reverb knob do? Oh, and don't even get me started on this release icon. This, this is a symbol for farts. If only there was some universally known symbol for release used in, I don't know, every synth ever. In fact, if we look at a newer library like the Tape Orchestra, it seems like they fixed the icons using those exact universally known symbols. It just never occurred to them to go and change this icon across all libraries, despite having released updates for it. Speaking of which, why do I need to adjust these parameters separately? I guess they were so short on space making this giant ass knob that they were like to hell with user experience, right? Shaping the envelope of a sound is a convenient 12 clicks away, since you gotta click on one, adjust it, and then when you adjust it, this menu goes away. So you gotta click here again, find the other parameter, and you better remember what you set your previous values to, because once you click to the next stage of the envelope, there's no indication of what you set that to anywhere. So I have a proposal, instead of this button and these parameters, which by the way are different in every library, why not make them all faders? As I load new libraries, the fader count could change, letting me know what's available to adjust. And then you could add these icons down here. And while you're at it, label this stuff or just let us hover over them and reveal some text. I'm just saying no one is asking you to reinvent the wheel with this stuff. And finally, let's get to this nightmare dropdown menu. As much as I hate everything else in this UI, it was all visual until this point. I would let all of that slide if this dropdown menu used to navigate the hundreds of free instruments was at least minimally functional. These texts here are too small and some of these entries include one library and some libraries are included in multiple categories while some are not included in any category at all. There are three libraries under acoustic guitar, two under electric, but 11 under experimental, which includes some Atmos stuff, but also the On Martino instrument or the music box. I mean, is a music box more experimental than the glass piano? Both are just rare instruments, right? Why is there a category for violin, one for cello, and then one for strings? Are these really necessary? Where's the pads category? You got like 50 of them here. God, I have so many questions. The categories themselves or the libraries aren't ordered alphabetically, even though on the Spitfire app they are alphabetical. 
alphabetized. So what gives? The categories are basically just random and the libraries I used to think are ordered chronologically in order of release. Like, are they actually expecting the user to remember the order in which this stuff was released? As if that's a significant event in our lives, like a first kiss or the time we went skydiving? But wait till I tell you that it's not even ordered chronologically. It's pure chaos. There's no search bar to speak of either. So unless you're prepared to memorize this inexplicable order, get ready to scroll through this menu hundreds of times. Even if you do memorize all of this like it's 1922, the order is very much subject to change upon new library releases. Look at this, this tiny ass navigation bar on the side here. I promise you the only reason I saw it was because it takes about a month to get to the bottom of this list by just mouse wheel scrolling. It's the same color as the rest of the UI and the line around it is thinner than Kate Moss. Grrr. The one system in place to make this navigation slightly easier is by clicking this star next to a sound, which then adds that to the start category up top. And that's a decent start for sure, except that given how little visible space there is, once you star more than 20 instruments, guess what? You're back to scrolling a bunch. But wait, there's more. Say you want to star an instrument you've been playing for a while. Well, you can't do that by just clicking here. And if I click this drop down, it won't navigate to the thing either. It just opens somewhere random. It almost feels like this menu does everything in its power not to be where it needs to be. They could easily add a star icon up here so I can quickly star it and get back to work. Why do you insist on killing my buzz? This play icon next to any instrument previews the library, but the load button is all the way down here. You can also double click them, which closes the menu, but you'd have to just figure that out or read the manual, which again, can I have a clickable link to that somewhere since no other effort has been made to make the UI make any kind of sense? Hey, maybe if I click on these three dots here, I'll get a link to the manual. Nope, just four new parameters, two of which I don't even understand enough to ever want to touch. And speaking of previews, if you want to hear an instrument before loading, you will only get a single note. Even though on the website you have these fully fleshed out musical ideas. And I get it, you didn't want to increase the library size by including those, but surely there's a happy medium between a single note and a whole composition, right? In fact, since all these sounds are already installed, all you really need to add to the preview section is a more interesting MIDI file that triggers those sounds, right? Hell, just give me the C major scale. There's more to a sound than a single note. I want to know how it sounds when played polyphonically. I want to see how one note glides to the next. Moving on to the black bar up here, it would seem like they included a refresh button that does nothing as far as I can tell. And I'm not lying when I say that I've been using this for three years and just now while filming this, learned that you can change the reverb type by clicking here. It just doesn't attract any attention to itself. There's no arrow or indentation to let you know this is clickable. I mean, all the performance stuff over here are unclickable and the reverb looks exactly like those. Even though right next to it, there's an arrow next to MIDI channel, which lets me know I can click it to reveal options. Also, everything else up here is utility stuff, MIDI channel, CPU usage, pan, etc. But the reverb plugin is included there, even though there's a huge effects section on the face of the plugin? Why? Who hurt you? And these are just some of the stuff that annoys me about laughs. And again, it's a testament to how good these libraries sound that I'm still using them three years later, despite experiencing urgh, fits of rage every time I reach for them. Like, look, to me, UI is not important. Believe me, I use Reaper. Reaper plugins may not be much to look at, but they work and the UI gives me all I need. Legible text, a unified look, and sliders. In my opinion, it's okay for plugin UI to be unattractive but functional. And at best, a good UI design will improve the user experience, making it a reliable plugin you will reach for when you're in a hurry. It's just a huge downward leap from just an ugly UI if it's designed in a way that actually detracts from an otherwise positive experience. All the while taking up an insane amount of space without making any of the important visual elements have any contrast against the white background or be big enough for you to see and read. And hopefully I demonstrated that even with my terrible graphic design skills, it takes all of five minutes to massively improve this. Imagine what an actually competent designer can do in an hour. On a related note, I'm very happy about how often new sounds are added to labs and almost every new addition is very welcome and pushes the envelope of what is sonically possible to achieve using labs. But even that 
that is made a bittersweet experience, adding to the clutter of an unsearchable library that isn't logically ordered. I think most Labs users would happily take three months of no new libraries if you spend that time to actually improve the UI, making sure it accommodates users who may struggle to read the small fonts, and implementing minor feature tweaks to make downloading and navigating the ever-growing roster of instruments here a bit easier. None of these are game-changing features either. A competent coder would be able to add a search bar in an hour. And as for the size of this thing, I mean, either put it to good use or get rid of it. Labs is supposed to expose people to your company and nudge them towards buying your libraries at some point, right? But looking at your paid libraries interfaces, they just look like a bigger black version of the same UI. So let's just say I'm not feeling exactly assured that buying them will be money well spent, even though they sound super impressive. And I know the chances of y'all seeing seeing this video on my small ass channel is next to zero. But if you do, I really hope you take it as constructive criticism from a long term user and a huge fan of Labs, even though you'd be justified to see it as the ramblings of an idiot who never fully read the user manual. And if you made it this far, give the video a like, share this with people at Spitfire Audio if you know any of them, and also let me know in the comments about your favorite plugin UIs. What makes for a good plugin UI? What are some bad examples? I really want to know if I'm the only one who has these problems. A huge thanks to all the folks supporting the channel and I hope to see you soon. Bye!